Laos. Good morning. Uh, NATO foreign ministers will meet uh, next uh, week in uh, Bucharest. We will address um, Russia's illegal war in Ukraine, which continues to threaten Euro-Atlantic uh, peace and uh, security. President Putin is failing in Ukraine, and he is responding with more brutality. Waves of uh, deliberate missile attacks on cities and civilian infrastructure, depriving Ukrainians of heat, light and food. This is a horrific start to the winter for Ukraine. These are also tough times for the rest of Europe and around the world, with rising energy and food prices. Yes, we are all paying a price for Russia's war against Ukraine. But the price we pay is in money, while the price Ukrainians pay is in blood. And if we let Putin win, all of us will pay a much higher price for many years to come. If Putin and other authoritarian leaders see that force is rewarded, they will use force again to achieve their goals. That will make our world more dangerous and all of us more vulnerable. So it is in our security interest to support Ukraine. We need to remember what this war is about. Russia is the aggressor. Ukraine is the victim of aggression. And of course, Ukraine has the right to defend itself. We help Ukraine to uphold that right. There will be no lasting peace if the aggressor wins, if oppression and autocracy prevail over freedom and democracy. Most wars end with negotiations, but what happens at the negotiating table depends on what happens on the battlefield. Therefore, the best way to increase the chances for a peaceful solution is to support Ukraine. So NATO will continue to stand with Ukraine for as long as it takes. We will not back down. Allies are providing unprecedented military support. And I expect foreign ministers will also agree to step up non-lethal support. Through our comprehensive assistance package, NATO has been delivering fuel, medical supplies, winter equipment, as well as drone jammers. I thank all allies for their contributions, and at our meeting in Bucharest, I will call for more. Over the longer term, we will help Ukraine transition from Soviet-era equipment to modern NATO standards, doctrine and training. We will meet uh, with Foreign Minister Dmitry Koleba to discuss Ukraine's most urgent needs and our long-term support. We will also meet uh, with the Foreign Ministers of Bosnia and Herzegovina, Georgia and Moldova. <coughs> Our three partners are facing Russian pressure in many different ways. So at our meeting, we will take further steps to help them protect their uh, independence and strengthen their ability to defend themselves. NATO foreign ministers will also address ways to strengthen our resilience and the challenges posed by China. China is not an adversary, but it is stepping up military modernization increasing its presence from the Arctic to the Western Balkans, from space to cyberspace, and seeking to control the critical infrastructure of NATO allies. 
The war in Ukraine has demonstrated our dangerous dependency on Russian gas. So we must assess our dependencies on other authoritarian regimes, not least China. We must manage the risks, reduce our vulnerabilities and increase our resilience. The foreign ministers of Finland and Sweden will join us uh, for all the discussions in Bucharest. It is time to finalize their accession process and welcome them as full-fledged members of our alliance. This will make them safer, NATO stronger and the Euro-Atlantic era more secure. With that, I'm ready to take your questions. Okay, we'll go to TVN Poland. Thank you, Maciej Sokolowski, TVN. Thank you, Secretary General. Uh, last week, after the missile hit Polish, Eastern Poland, uh, Germany offered its Patriot system to, the, to Poland. But Poland came up with a different idea to position the system in Ukraine. So I'd like to ask you, were there any consultations before, because according to Germany, it's not possible to position the Patriot system in Ukraine at all without consultations with NATO allies. Were there any consultations before? Is it possible to place the Patriot system in Ukraine? And what's your opinion? Where's the best place to, to locate the system? Thank you. I welcome the German offer to strengthen uh, the air defenses of Poland by offering to deploy uh, Patriot batteries to Poland. Uh, after the um, tragic incident uh, in Poland last week where uh, two uh, people lost their lives. Um, over the years, uh, NATO has increased its presence in the eastern part of the alliance, and in particular since the invasion in February, we have stepped out our presence uh, with uh, uh, increasing the number of battle groups, uh, increasing the number of troops on the ground, uh, but also backed by significant uh, air and, and naval uh, capabilities, and this includes also significant air defense systems. Um, with uh, fighter aircrafts, uh, ground-based uh, 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 air defense systems like Patriots, and of course also naval uh, air defense in, uh, systems, or naval-based air defense systems. So in total we have increased our presence, uh, including with air defense systems, significantly in the eastern part of the alliance. Um, in addition, our uh, Supreme Allied Commander, uh, Sarkar, General Cavalli, has the authorities to quickly reinforce and to further strengthen our presence uh, and uh, augment further our air defenses in the eastern part of the alliance. Uh, in parallel with that, uh, we have also provided significant uh, air defense uh, systems to uh, Ukraine, uh, including with modern systems. Um, uh, Germany has provided uh, um, modern air defense systems uh, to Ukraine, and uh, I will, at the, at, at the Foreign Ministry meeting next week, uh, urge allies to further step up uh, the support, uh, not least with air defense, to uh, Ukraine. But specific uh, decisions on specific capabilities, that uh, remains uh, national uh, decisions. We'll go to uh, Politico. <clears throat> Um, thank you. I had a question on China and the report that ministers are expected to adopt. Um, do you see this report as a strong first step in implementing the China language that was adopted in the strategic concept? And what do you see as the next steps for making the language of the strategic concept on China um, a reality, so in the implementation? Thank you. Foreign ministers will, when they meet in Bucharest, uh, follow up uh, on the decisions uh, heads of state and government made in Madrid in June, uh, when they agreed the strategic concept, uh, where we address China in a way we have never done before in any uh, strategic concept of uh, NATO. Uh, we state clearly that, of course, we need to continue to engage with China. China is not an adversary, but at the same time, we see the uh, significant ongoing uh, military uh, modernization of China, uh, including with uh, advanced uh, weapon systems, long-range missiles, uh, new nuclear weapons. Uh, we see how China and Russia are working more and more closely together. Uh, we see how China tries to control critical infrastructure in Europe. We saw it through the uh, discussions uh, about 5G networks. And we see also how China doesn't share our values. Um, 
uh, uh, violating human uh, rights in, in, uh, in China, and how they are cracked down on democratic protests, journalists, uh, not least in, uh, in Hong Kong. Um, so all of this uh, uh, makes it necessary for uh, allies uh, to address this uh, together, and that's exactly what uh, uh, we will um, uh, do uh, when we meet uh, in Bucharest, uh, to uh, discuss how to follow up these political decisions. This is about resilience. Uh, it's about learning from uh, 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 what we have seen after the Ukraine uh, war or the uh, uh, brutal war of aggression against the Ukraine by Russia and the way Russia has used uh, our dependency on gas. Uh, uh, based on that, we need to also assess uh, uh, over dependencies or dependencies on commodities uh, from other authoritarian regimes, uh, and that includes China, for instance, rare earth minerals, uh, supply chains, and other, chains and other uh, aspects where there are potential vulnerabilities for NATO allies. So, so resilience is part of the way uh, we address the challenge that uh, China is posing uh, to us. Uh, we need also to work with our, our uh, Asia-Pacific partners, uh, Japan, South Korea, uh, New Zealand and, and Australia, and of course everything we do on technology uh, is also related to uh, uh, ensuring that we keep the technological edge. Uh, we have established a new uh, fund for technology, te technology uh, to ensure that we maintain the technological edge, uh, knowing that China is investing heavily in new uh, technologically advanced uh, systems. So there are many things we need to do, uh, but I look forward to the uh, uh, discussions with foreign ministers uh, next week to chart the way forward. Bloomberg. Thank you. Uh, Natalia Dresjak from Bloomberg. I want to ask about Ukraine's application to join NATO. Um, I understand why allies wouldn't want to push forward with a fast-track application right now, given the war. But I'm wondering why won't allies consider a more concrete roadmap to give Ukraine a uh, trajectory to eventually join um, the alliance one day. Thanks. So NATO's door is open, and we have demonstrated that uh, not only in words but also in deeds. Uh, over the last years, we have uh, welcomed um, uh, North Macedonia and uh, Montenegro as new members of this alliance. And just this year, uh, we made a decision to invite uh, Finland and Sweden, and we have signed accession protocols for Finland and Sweden joining the alliance. Uh, uh, on all these decisions, Russia has been heavily against. Uh, they have tried to stop the accession process of uh, North Macedonia and Montenegro, and they have tried, of course, also to stop the accession of uh, Finland and uh, Sweden, demonstrating that NATO's door is open and demonstrating that uh, uh, Russia doesn't have a veto on NATO enlargement. So we have demonstrated that uh, NATO's door uh, uh, is open and that uh, it is for NATO allies and aspirant countries to decide on uh, membership. This is also the message, message to Ukraine uh, and uh, we have uh, reiterated the decision we made uh, back in 2008 in Bucharest at the, at the uh, summit there uh, that Ukraine uh, will become a, a, a NATO uh, member. Uh, then of course the way to help uh, to move Ukraine towards membership is to work with them both on the political uh, partnership and uh, on the practical uh, support. And that's exactly what we do, uh, not least when we now are stepping up our practical cooperation with Ukraine, both the immediate need for uh, uh, support with winter clothing, fuel generators to uh, be able to manage the difficulties throughout the, this coming winter, but also the more long-term uh, cooperation uh, where we are uh, looking into how we can step up what we do when it comes to institution building, uh, reforms, um, uh, and not least the fundamental transition from Soviet era uh, equipment to modern NATO standards, uh, doctrines, equipment uh, that will also increase interoperability between uh, Ukraine and, uh, and NATO and, and help uh, Ukraine to move towards uh, EU Atlantic uh, integration. Uh, the most urgent and, and immediate task and the focus now is, of course, uh, uh, to provide support to Ukraine, uh, uh, make sure that allies are providing military support and NATO is providing 
the support uh, to ensure that President Putin doesn't win in Ukraine, uh, but that uh, Ukraine is able to liberate territory and, and achieve uh, a peace that ensures that Ukraine prevails as a sovereign independent uh, nation. Interfax Ukraine. Thank you, Ivana. Irina Sommer, News Agency Interfax Ukraine. Secretary General, recently during NATO Ukraine Commission, Head of Presidential Office Mr. Yermak said that Ukraine can be a part of NATO air defense system. What is your opinion on this? Do you think it's possible in the upcoming future or only when Ukraine will be a member of NATO? Thank you. So NATO allies um, are or, and have uh, delivered significant amounts of NATO air defense uh, systems to, uh, to uh, Ukraine uh, with uh, uh, recently uh, NASAMS uh, uh, batteries, which has proven extremely effective. Uh, Germany has provided the RST system, which is a modern uh, NATO standard uh, uh, system. Um, uh, I was in Spain uh, this week, and uh, Spain has offered additional Hawk batteries. So NATO allies uh, uh, have already delivered and have, have promised to continue to deliver uh, NATO standard uh, uh, air defense systems, uh, but also, of course, uh, training, uh, maintenance, uh, spare parts, and also ammunition to these systems. So in that way, we already see how, how uh, Ukraine is able to operate uh, NATO um, systems, uh, and this is good for Ukraine. It's helping them to defend against uh, the horrific missile and air attacks against Ukrainian uh, cities, Ukrainian uh, infrastructure. Uh, and it's also, of course, increasing and improving interoperability between Ukrainian uh, forces and NATO forces. Uh, and, and, and before the war, Ukraine also participated in different NATO operations. Uh, operations. Ukraine was part of a mission in Afghanistan. Uh, Ukraine has been for many years in, in, in our mission in Kosovo. We have uh, conducted training together. So there are many ways that we are working more closely together as NATO and as uh, Ukraine with equipment training uh, procedures. Uh, but again, the focus now is on uh, helping Ukraine uh, to uh, fight back the Russian invasion, uh, and then uh, we have more long-term uh, 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 cooperation, uh, as I outlined on, the, on institution building and, uh, and strengthening further interoperability. Uh, Imedi, Georgia. Uh, thank you. Uh, Oana. Good morning, Mr. Secretary General. I have a question about Georgia. Meeting in Bucharest is highly symbolic and emotional for uh, Georgia because in 2008 leaders promised NATO membership in Bucharest. What should we expect now? Any specific decisions and additional steps to strengthen security? Uh, to defend our country. And also would like to hear your comment on um, the decision made in the European Parliament this week to declare Russia as um, state uh, which sponsors terrorism. Thank you so much. Um, <clears throat> first, uh, on, uh, on Georgia, as we will meet with Georgia, uh, together with also the foreign ministers from Moldova and, um, and Bosnia Herzegovina. And I think just the fact that we meet uh, as foreign ministers in Bucharest demonstrates our strong uh, political commitment, our support uh, to these uh, highly valued partners. Georgia is a highly valued partner, and we know that uh, uh, these partners uh, are a subject of uh, Russian interference. Uh, Georgia has, has seen uh, Russian military uh, aggression back in 2008, and, and, uh, and still uh, uh, significant parts of Georgia is uh, uh, controlled uh, by Russian-backed uh, forces. Um, so that just makes it uh, even more important uh, to uh, work with Georgia, uh, to strengthen our uh, uh, cooperation with them, to help them to strengthen their resilience, and to help uh, Georgia to defend itself. Uh, and uh, for Georgia, we could also increase our support by building on the substantial NATO-Georgia uh, uh, package and continue both our political and practical uh, cooperation. Um, then uh, on uh, the decision by the European uh, Parliament, I would like to say that um, uh, what we have seen over now uh, several months 
uh, are horrific attacks against uh, uh, civilians, residential areas, uh, critical civilian infrastructure, uh, and uh, uh, also against schools and hospitals uh, with a high number of uh, 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 civilian casualties. Uh, intentional targeting of civilian uh, infrastructure and civilians uh, is a war crime. And therefore, it is so extremely important that uh, uh, in investigations are conducted, that uh, all the facts are established, uh, and NATO allies are also uh, helping and supporting the ongoing efforts by uh, Ukraine uh, with forensic uh, support and legal support uh, to be able to establish uh, the facts and, uh, and, uh, and to ensure accountability that those responsible for these horrific attacks are held accountable. Um, deliberate attacks on civilians um, are war crimes and those responsible must be held accountable. Okay, NPR. Thank you. Um, for months now, you've been discussing with your armaments directors how you are going to practically and speedily um, improve the, the supply chain of weapons. And we're heading into winter. You've just had another meeting with armaments directors. What practical steps have you taken? Uh, what, what can you show for these meetings? Because I read the press release and it sounded exactly like the one from months ago. It, the language doesn't seem to change much. And just to, to, if I could clarify one of your, your statements earlier, you said that sending a Patriot system into Ukraine would be a national decision for Germany but obviously this would have huge implications for NATO I mean isn't that sort of um, th th isn't that a no-go for an ally to send a, a Patriot system into Ukraine would involve all of NATO wouldn't it thanks it would risk the, risk an article 5 declaration if such a such a system were attacked NATO allies have all this sent Sorry, because Germany insists that its technicians would have to be there. Oh. I mean, I know this is very hypothetical, but oh, I'm just oh, but I mean, also, the NATO allies have been able to uh, deliver uh, different types of advanced uh, air defense systems and also other advanced uh, systems like the HIMARS uh, uh, to uh, Ukraine already. And the way this has been done is that uh, when there is a need for uh, specialists uh, to operate these systems, be it air defense systems or or other advanced uh, artillery systems, uh, uh, they have, the Ukrainians have received training uh, in a NATO country. Uh, so, for instance, on the NASAMS, which is also an advanced air defense system, training has been conducted uh, in NATO allied countries by NATO personnel, but NATO personnel has not uh, conducted any work inside Ukraine. And again, this highlights that NATO is not party to the conflict. We don't have forces or troops uh, on the ground, uh, but NATO allies support Ukraine's right for self-defense. And we have that right to help them to uphold that, that, that right. And we do that by providing uh, different types of advanced uh, systems, uh, but also by training them. I, I, just a couple of weeks ago, I went to the United Kingdom. I, I visited one of the training facilities there where the United Kingdom, but also Canada, uh, Denmark, uh, Netherlands, uh, uh, Lithuania, um, and also actually partners like Australia and, uh, and New Zealand uh, are providing training uh, to Ukrainian soldiers uh, and, uh, and, and, and personnel in different ways. So there are ways for us to um, ensure that they can operate also modern advanced systems without deploying NATO personnel inside Ukraine. Uh, but again, the, the, the specific decisions on the specific um, systems are national decisions. Sometimes there are end users agreements and other things, so they need to consult with other uh, allies. Uh, but at the end of the day, it has to be taken by uh, the national uh, governments. Um, uh, yeah. Well, what we have seen is that uh, production has increased. Uh, and. Uh, and uh, 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 partly we have been able to increase, or NATO allies have been able to increase production of uh, Soviet era equipment and Soviet era ammunition, which is extremely urgent and needed uh, because uh, Ukraine still has a lot of um, Soviet artillery or Soviet era artillery uh, and they need ammunition, they need spare parts. And uh, some of our uh, uh, members in the Eastern part of the Alliance, they have that production, uh, those production facilities and they have ramped up uh, production. 
Uh, I met with um, uh, many industry leaders um, last week um, and we discussed in detail how they can uh, ramp up production. Of course, some of these uh, increases can happen quickly. Some has already taken place. Uh, other uh, uh, will require more time. Uh, partly you can increase production by by having more shifts, by, 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 by util utilizing existing production lines uh, uh, more. Uh, but of course, uh, uh, sometimes there is a need for um, new production lines, new uh, um, um, facilities, and that will require investments, and that uh, by nature will take some more time. But production has already increased, uh, uh, but we need also to uh, do even more to also ensure more long-term investments in in additional production lines.